Hey everybody, I'm Brian with Fort Knox Company and I wanna tell you about these different style of breakers that you might see, what they are and why we need them, all the different situations on when and where we should have them. So these are AFCI breakers. It stands for Arc Fault Interrupters. Most commonly, you'll see these breakers. Um, just to start, these are Homeline Square D breakers. Homeline is the brand and it tells you the different ways that these connect, the different ways that these tabs go and the back here so when you're rocking them into the panel how they actually connect so usually it will start on any of these breakers you'll see it says hom that is the type so these are all hom breakers but this is what you'll find at the store this you know nine dollars ten dollars maybe at the most fifteen dollars i don't mind throwing a whole panel of these because it's not going to cost that much but now you're starting to see different ones like these usually you'll see the purple or the white but why do we have a pigtail? Why do we not have a pigtail? And when I first got these, I knew that I needed these and they are more expensive. These will be 40, 50 bucks. Sometimes you can find them on sale for $35. So if you have a whole panel of 20 to 30 of these things, it really starts to add up. So you might wanna just grab these, but if you don't have the right breakers in there, you might not pass your inspections. So really let's just jump into this and talk about what they are. These are arc fault indicators or interrupters. They interrupt it, so they basically are like a safety before the actual breaker. What this is, is you'll see a GFCI, ground fault interrupter, in conjunction with a regular breaker. This normally is in line. We'll have this installed in the panel, and the wires that go to the very first outlet will be one of these. This is an interrupter if there's a fault or an arc inside the circuit. This will pop hopefully before it gets to here. So it's kind of like a safety before we get to the panel. We don't want the arc or the faulty circuit to make its way to the panel because even though this should pop, it's already made its way down the line. So we try to stop it with this. You'll have a little green indicator showing the circuit's good. If you've ever been a homeowner, you've probably had to reset these because you over overload a circuit or something, but this is the safety before the breaker. These are kind of like a combination of those. These are starting to be found more commonly in the house because there's different circuits that don't actually have plugs. They don't actually have a space for this to be. Example, lights. You'll have a 20 or sometimes a 15 that goes to your lights. That goes straight to your lights or your switch in the lights. There is no place for one of these. So they put one of these in place. That will let you have an arc fault interrupter before your lights and your switches and everything. So that circuit essentially has an interrupter in it. So let me show you what that looks like in the house and on the panel. Right here, I'm wiring up my panel and you'll see I have a whole bunch of regular breakers. This goes to the kitchen outlets, my living room outlets, the gym. This goes to the garage door, garage outlets. And since all these are outlets, the very first one in line, I can put a GFCI outlet. So for example, we have our garage door. This is gonna have one or two outlets on it. This goes directly over here to where the garage door will be. I ran the supply line. This will go in, this will be a GFCI protection. And then everything on it, the load, which will go up right here to my garage door plug. This will be protected. I don't need one of those AFCI breakers. Now, when we come over to here, I'm gonna be wiring in some other circuits that don't have the opportunity for that plug, or it's a single plug and I don't want that first plug to be a GFCI. For example, I have a dedicated fridge line. This one will be one outlet just to the fridge. So we'll go take a look at that in the house. Right here is gonna be our outlet. It is a single run straight to the garage. So I go breaker to here. Imagine that you have your fridge in here and you have one outlet and then this is a GFCI outlet and for whatever reason it trips. The only way to reset this would be to pull your fridge all the way out, possibly have to remove your water line and then push the button, reset your circuit and then push your fridge back in. That'd be a huge hassle. This does need to be protected by an arc fault, but how do we do that? We use those bigger breakers, those AFCI breakers. But let's look at another situation where I have lighting. I have power that goes over to my lights. This will be for all the garage lights. I have it going over to here, which is my supply. And this comes directly from the panel. This will supply power to my switches, which will let me 
power all the lights here inside the garage. But from the panel to here, there is no GFCI. So how do we protect it? We use one of those AFCI breakers. This right here, I can use a 15 or a 20. This has a little test button. This should pop before the actual breaker hits. But we use one of these in these types of situations where we don't have the opportunity to put an outlet that's GFCI or we're running power to different areas that don't have plugs in place. This is now standard for most code in most states. I'm here in Nevada, so this is what they require. I would still check with your local codes. This is just a safer way to do it. So it is like essentially like a breaker or an interrupter before the actual breaker. This is just the way they're doing it now. So all of these are dedicated outlet circuits and they have GFCIs as the very first plug. These will be going to dedicated outlets such as my fridge or going to the lights. All the different lights in the different rooms will have one of these. So in essence, this combination is the same as this and this. These two together, they've combined it here in this breaker. What threw me off when I first started getting these is that I thought that they were way too big. I must have gotten the wrong ones. You can see that they have a raised area right here. That is the same profile. So it does fit in the panel. It exposes itself the same way, but this allows us to have an interrupter before the breaker. This is the traditional way of doing it. And now this is required in any areas where you don't have a plug that you can do this with. Let's look at a panel real quick to see what it looks like from the outside with the finish on. And then I'll start talking about the differences between these two. So inside our finished panel, you'll see a lot of these that have the test. You'll see some over here that don't. A lot of these larger ones, you don't have it in that. And then you'll see our standard, and then you'll see more of these. So underneath this panel, you'll have that larger portion that sits below, and this is what it looks like when you put the finish plate on. These are the regular ones, so this probably goes to a dedicated outlet. You see right here, it says garage GFCI. So for the inspector, when they did this, they said, hey, this does have a GFCI on it, and then these obviously have it on the face. So now we can take these away. We kind of talked about what they are, why, but now what's the difference between these two? In essence, they are basically the same. They are going to accomplish the same task. The only difference is that this pigtail, which goes down to your actual neutral bar on your panel, this grabs onto it. So these ones sometimes are more expensive because they actually click on and automatically touch the neutral bar. Then on the back, you have your silver, which would be your white wire for your circuit, your hot wire here for your black. So your white and black go on the back of this. And this is clamped down on your neutral bar. Let me show you. So these two are here side by side. This pigtail would go to your neutral bar. Same way that this one does here, these wires, these white neutrals go to the neutral bar below. The black hot wire goes to the breaker itself. Obviously your grounds go to a separate ground here. This is not bridged because this is a sub panel, but in the main panel, sometimes you'll see these connected. They still want you to separate them. The whites will go over here to the neutral bar. Your bare grounds would go over here or here to like a ground bar. But with these AFCI breakers, you need to connect the breaker itself to the neutral, which is the plug or the pigtail, like you can see underneath here. When you push it on, it actually grabs the neutral bar and it makes a connection. Then in the back, the silver is where your white wire goes. So your wire would come down white to the silver, black to the top gold, and then the pigtail or the plug goes to the neutral bar. That creates the connection here. And then we have our circuit connected to the back. So the wires for your circuit coming through the box connect to the breaker itself then the pigtail and the clamp go to the neutral bar. You would still run your bare copper over to a ground bar. And overall, these still just connect the same way. If you have the pigtail, it is gonna have the little feet there. You're still gonna connect these the same way, essentially. Once you have the back hooked in, you just push it down and it clamps over it. So in reality, these two are exactly the same. You're just paying for the convenience of not having to connect the pigtail to the neutral bar. It should grab on it by itself. Both of them still do have the connections here for the neutral and the hot, neutral and the hot. So they're still gonna wire up the same way. 
This one's just a little bit more low profile. You don't have the pigtail coming off. And depending on where you get it, it might cost a couple more dollars. But in reality, you can use either one. And that's pretty much it. I just want to tell you guys a little bit about the different types of breakers. It's something that I've started to learn because a lot of the code now requires it. I used to see that on the old panels where you would have a regular breaker and you just had GFCI plugs and then all your lights, which are usually 15, but sometimes 20, they would just have a regular breaker on them. And if for some reason they had a fault, they would pop the breaker and you'd be safe. But now most codes require you to have an arc fault interrupter in that circuit. So this is how we do that. A little bit more expensive. I know when I was looking at breakers, I was like, why do I want to buy a $60 breaker when I could just buy a $6 breaker? Well, now you know why. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. I tried to kind of keep my thoughts in line there, but I want to let you homeowners know or any DIY enthusiasts, if you want to tackle these projects yourself, you can definitely do it. I'm running completely brand new circuits throughout this whole entire casita. We have outlets, lights, fans. We have dedicated ceiling plugs and power sources. This is how I'm gonna make sure that everything is safe and we pass our inspections and I wanted to pass the information on to all of you. If you have any questions on this, let me know. I can clarify or if you have any information to add, please leave them in the comments there. I'm really good at getting back to all those. And if you haven't already, please like the video. It really helps me out a lot. Consider subscribing if you want to follow along on more electrical videos, plumbing, concrete, really anything DIY. I'll have it there for you. I love taking suggestions if you want videos on specific topics. But other than that, I appreciate it all, and I'll see you on the next build.